So yeah, so Claire, you are a product manager at SAFE for now, which team is this? Uh, so for the Python and desktop APIs team, uh, which is okay. a team that Heather's on here um, and who um, has been mainly been working on the CCAN uh, data store reader writer. Um, and maybe a little bit about that. So uh, CCAN is an open source, uh, open data management portal. Um, and we'd heard a lot about it uh, requested from some uh, some customers of ours and uh, including the city of Surrey and the city of Toronto. Um, so that's kind of what kickstarted it. Um, and they were collaborators with uh, during the building of this too, um, in touch with Heather. Um, CCAN is also used by um, other levels of government, uh, like the gov government of Canada, um, the Australian government, huh. and also uh, Singapore, to name a few. Fantastic. Um, yeah, and there's also uh, enterprise users of um, uh, of CCAN. Okay. Well, if we've got anyone tuned in today, they'll probably be down in Australia, I would think. So um, that's uh, that's what we do. And Heather, you're you're the developer responsible for uh, creating this in uh, FMA. Is that right? Yeah, I am. And yeah, I'm going to be showing uh, just some features of the new data store reader writer that we've had today. So yeah, as Claire explained, uh, CCAN is an open data service. So it allows mm -hmm. you to set up and configure your own server where organizations can upload and create their own data sets and resources. So we already have FME integration for CCAN in the form of the CCAN connector. Now this does the sort of things that you'd expect a web connector in FME to be able to do. So it enables you to manage your data sets and it also enables you to upload and download resources as files. Now we've added okay. the CCAN data store reader writer. And if you have the data store extension enabled on your CCAN server, what this does it enables you to treat your resources like databases. So this allows you to use row wise operations on your data. Oh, really? so yep. Wow. Yeah, so instead of just having to download and then upload your entire resource, if you want to update it, you only have to upload portions of it. So it's a non-spatial format and let's just get into it. So the CCAN data store reader writer is included as part of the CCAN package on FME, which you can just get directly from the FME hub. And it's meant to work in tandem with the CCAN connector. So if I want to create a data set on CCAN, I still have to uh -huh. use a CCAN connector from that. Now, the same web connections I've set up with the CCAN connector will automatically work with the reader writer. If I need to set up a web connection, all I need to do is enter in the server URL. And if I want to perform authenticated access, so if I'm an editor and I want to upload something, I'll have to enter in my API token, which okay. I can get from the web UI. I already have one here. So let's just create a data set for us to use today. I'm going to add this data set to my organization. And let's just run this here. So I want to get some data to put in my data set. So I want to upload it as a resource. Now, the CCAN data store format only works with tabular resources. So those are things like CSVs or spreadsheets. If I'm trying to work with PDFs or images, the CCAN connector is still a good option. Okay. So I'm That's going to go to get some data for my data set. In this case, I'm actually going to pull down a CSV because that's something I'm going to be using for the rest of the demo. So I'm going to choose to download a resource from another data set. And I can just choose to download this as a file. So I've chosen a different data set and I'm going to choose to upload this to my own data set. But I was working with the CSV. And what if I wanted to do something like update the data in my CSV? 
I'd have to open it up with something like the feature reader and then turn it back into a file and then upload it. And we actually have a better option for that. So if you have data store already enabled on your CCAN server, you might have a service known as data pusher enabled. And what this does, it turns, it automatically scans any files that you've uploaded to your CCAN server, and it will turn them into data store resources. So our CCAN reader is able to read any data store resources that you have on your server, regardless of how they were uploaded. So I'm going to go look again at my source data store resource. I'm going to select the same resource. And I'm going to upload it again, this time as a data store resource. Now, the thing about Data Pusher is that it does its best, but it's not always able to guess the right types for your attributes. So in this case, I have a time attribute. And I actually want it to be set as a timestamp attribute. So when I create the data store resource on my own server, I can ensure that that's the case. Also, sorry, I think I might have set the wrong data set for this. It's OK, no worries. This is this is fascinating. I didn't realize it was there was quite so much. I mean, I guess I should have realized that uh, these sort of products are uh, quite quite a lot of functionality in there. Yeah. So I'm just going to set my resource name right here. And in order to use a lot of the row wise operations, I want to set a primary key for my table. Right. It's kind of like a database. So in this case, yeah. I'm just going to set the small point ID. And I'm going to create my resource. Now, that's the gist of it. But let's demonstrate some more advanced functionality. OK. So let's just make sure it's been created. So one of the things you might want to do is only pull down part of your data set. So say we're dealing with a very, very big data set. Mm -hmm. I could download the entire thing, or I could just choose to query a portion of my data set. Now, this depends on the configuration of your CCAN server. But if you have SQL search enabled on your server, what you can do so I'm reading the data set I've just created, mm -hmm. the resource I've just created. What I can do is I uploaded 250 points just there. What if I only want to upload, say, 200? Huh. So I want to rewrite my data set resource so it only contains 200 points. And I can just specify with this with a where clause. So I'm going to say I want the point ID to 200. So I will want to pull the first 200 attributes in. And then I'm going to rewrite my data store resource. So I'm going to connect it to a writer. And we'll notice that my feature type names have the ID at the end. And this is important because resources in the CCAN data set can share the same name. So it's important to put the ID like this so uh, you know okay. that you're updating the same resource. Now, I did wonder about that. Yeah, it's, sorry, Heather, yeah. I keep interrupting. But, uh, but yeah, that's very, that's very interesting to know because I didn't realize that. I thought, well, those numbers look odd. So uh, okay. that's it's good. It's long, but if you connect it, it will automatically add it for yeah. you. Yeah. So I can do this one of two ways. I can choose to just replace my entire data set, or I can use a table handling method known as truncate existing. So if I've gone into the CCAN web portal and I've gone and added something like a description to each of my field names, I don't have to recreate that. And more importantly, if I've already specified a primary key, I don't need to do that again. So using truncate existing allows you to recreate your entire data set without having to recreate your data dictionary. Okay. So let me just do that. And now my data set only has 200 points. Of course, if I want to update my data set, I don't have to go through and update all the rows. Let's say I want to delete all the negative elevations for my value. So my data set contains that two longitude elevation in time. Let's say I just wanted to delete all the negative elevation values. So I only want to get rid of some of the rows. So I'm going to do a similar thing. I'm going to query my data set. 
and I'm going to choose to select all of the negative elevation values. Huh. Now I can choose to run my CCAN writer with the delete method. So I select the delete feature operation, and for my match column, I'm going to select the primary key for my data set. Yeah. And then when I run this, let me just, then when I run this, I'm just only going to delete all the negative elevation values. I'm going to keep my transaction size small that way. So in this case, I'm only going to be deleting that one value. But yeah, what if I want to update only a specific column in my data set? I can do something similar. So I'm just going to choose to select all of the rows in my data set. But when I read my data set, I'm only going to choose to update the time values. So if we can maybe see here, all of the time values say they're from 2008. And what if I want to update the year to 2021? I can choose to only expose the point ID because that's my primary key and the time. Then I'll add something like a date time calculator. I'll choose to add 13 years to that value. And then I'll choose to rewrite my data set again. So this way, when I update my data set, so I'm using my existing data set and updating it, even though I haven't specified any of these values, it won't delete them. So I'm really only uploading the things I need, updating the things I need to in my data set. So if I run this translation, in my updated data set, I should see 2021 values, but the rest of my values should still be there. Yeah. And once I make sure this translation's run, here. Hey, well, that there's always something happens in a demo, especially when it's live. Oh, there we go. I said update, insert, and update. update. Yeah, Let's there we go. Works again. Yeah, I think maybe you changed it and didn't hit OK. That might have been. Yeah, it, I think that might have been it. Yeah. It's all Sometimes good. it's just as useful to see the things that not to do yeah. as the things to do. <laughs> Yep. And it prints a helpful Absolutely. error message if you set the right, if you set the wrong feature. Yeah, type. And, and that proves, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah moment Absolutely. of truth. Let's go and look at the CCAN web portal to see that data set we've just updated. So walking trail, and we'll see that those time values 2021. are all 2021. And we've Perfect. kept all the same values we still have. So I think that's about all for today. So if you want to use the CCAN data store reader writer, you just place one reader or one writer for each data set you want to update, and you mm -hmm. can add feature types for each resource in your data set. Yep, that that's it. Looks fantastic. Can I ask a couple of questions? If, sure. Uh, uh, upsert, is that update and insert at the same time? Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, okay. I think that's we don't often show that in FME. I don't think we normally have an upsert in many writers. Maybe that's changed recently. But uh, And uh, the other question was, um, can you use this with the feature reader and the feature writer transformer uh, instead yes, of using an actual writer? OK, fantastic. I mean, there's all sorts of questions I could be asking, like, does the fan out work with this? Is it working dynamic and uh, mm -hmm. things like that? So. That you can use this with a uh, feature type fan out as well. Oh, fantastic. Love it. Well, that was really great. And uh, yeah, like I said, it, it's, I, I sort of saw more in there than I, than I realized we were going to see, uh, which is uh, fantastic. And uh, especially when Claire said earlier about all the people who are using it uh, already. Uh, so, uh, yeah. So, um, is there anything else uh, we should know, Claire, do you think, about um, this or any other items that the, the Python API team's added that 
we might not know about. Yeah, I think that Heather went way more into detail than I ever could. So that was really great. Thanks. Oh, for no, that was awesome. That's that was great. a great demo. Um, and so, um, but yeah, I can share a few things that are upcoming. Uh, there's one uh, that's upcoming quite soon that is almost done and which also Heather's been uh, the main proponent uh, on working on that. And that's the unfolded uh, reader writer. Um, the, and the what? Sorry, say that again. I uh, unfolded. Um, so oh, unfolded. Un okay. Um, so unfolded's a geospatial data analytics platform, um, mm -hmm. and uh, this would be a, a reader writer for them. Um, I don't know, Heather. Do you have anything to add on that one uh, about unfolded? I know that we're almost at pushing it out. Um. Yeah, no, Unfolded is, it allows you to upload your own data sets and they have a really great maps feature that allows you to upload your, view your data sets and then there are lots of different options to display your data sets. It has things like H3 supports and oh. it automatically scans your data sets so you can just automatically place your geometry on, as I think they call them feature layers, on your maps. Oh, that's fantastic. And that's going to come out as a package then, I guess, because... Uh, yeah, that's also a package. Yeah. Okay. I mean, that's great because obviously in the past, we uh, every time we put a new format out, you would have to update FME completely. And now I guess we just uh, put a new package and there we are. That's, uh, that's yeah, fantastic. We've got a few other updates coming up as well. Um, so we've got uh, some uh, precisely background map update. Um, that should allow uh, users to view their data on a precisely background map um, and uh, precisely being a data augmentation uh, augmentation solution. Mm -hmm. um, and there's also uh, to add bulk mode uh, support to Python formats, uh, mostly to improve the performance of workspaces. So that's also coming up. Uh -huh. Wow. Uh, and we're... Yeah, Sorry, go yeah, on. Plenty coming up. Going on, I was going to say, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, and I'll I'll give another tidbit. Um, is that we are also scoping out um, an Airtable reader writer. Um, and if there's anyone out there who is uh, using Airtable and encountering um, some problems, um, so with uh, we're looking for basically opportunities for uh, solving those data related problems uh, with this. Um, with this reader writer so feel free to reach out to Sorry. us and we're looking for real life uh use cases that will inform exactly how we build it fantastic and yes and folks can get in touch through the uh support team would probably be the best way so safe.com slash support they can file a case and ask to pass some info on and uh, i'm sure they'll end up with you mm -hmm. yeah just say to pass it on to claire uh on the pda team Mm -hmm. um, or you can just rem remember that to pass it on to the PDA team, um, and we'll we'll have eyes yeah. on it. Fantastic. Well, I should say that as much as I'm introducing you to the folk out there, well, I'm introducing you to myself because <laughs> I don't think we've met before. Um, it's uh, how long have you both been working at Safe? Because um, I've been working since May, but I was also here as an intern for a couple. Right. Months. Okay. Mm -hmm. Heather's yeah. Heather's uh, returning, and I joined in uh, mid June, uh, so mid June okay. 2021. Wow. Well, there you go. See, see, I've not been in the office for about two, two or three years now. So uh, that's. Uh, yeah, that'd be why. I think well, Heather's yeah. in the office today, and yeah. I'm working from home. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I mean, I work out in Manitoba, so uh, I'm, uh, I'm rarely in the office anyway, even at the best of times. But uh, when we're in a <laughs> pandemic like this, it just but, yeah, it's good to meet you both and hear what's going on in that team. And, uh, awesome. Yeah. Thanks for having well, us on the channel. Yeah, well, thank, thank you for coming along. It's been fantastic.